Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Off-Road Hub. My name is Ken, thank you so much for watching. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about wheels and tires, past and future. Alright, so if you didn't watch my last video, make sure you go back and do that because in that one I explain uh, that I'm doing a solid axle swap on my 2010 Toyota FJ Cruiser. Um, one ton axles, Dana 60 in the front, Sterling 10 and a half in the rear. Um, so I have to change everything underneath, including the wheels and tires that I'm using. I get a lot of questions about wheels and tires, and so I thought I'd make this one about wheels and tires specifically. Now the wheels I have been using have been these Stealth Custom Series F5 wheels. Uh, this is a 16 inch wheel. It's uh, 16 by eight, so eight inches wide and 16 inches, uh, 60 inches tall. Um, it's been a really fantastic wheel. I was a little bit concerned when I first got them because they're so lightweight. This wheel, this 16 inch wheel is only uh, 18 pounds and two ounces extremely lightweight and that's one of the things that attracted me to it but also scared me a little bit about it um, I didn't want to have a super heavy wheel and tire combination on my FJ with independent suspension so I wanted to be as light as possible so I got these lightweight wheels but I was worried about strength obviously that is not a concern I beat the crap out of these uh, these stealth custom series wheels and they've been perfect I haven't bent one haven't cracked one They've been amazing and I would highly recommend them to any, uh, uh, for, if you own any Toyota four wheel drive, definitely go for it. Now they, and they make these for specifically for Toyotas. They also make some specifically for Jeeps. So if you're a Jeep owner, check out Stealth Custom Series wheels. Just, they've been fantastic. Um, they've got pretty good bead retention uh, ridges right here. I've never, had, I've never lost a bead. On these wheels, uh, I've been running a 315 75 16, and so it's a pretty wide tire on an 8 inch wide rim. So, wheel, sorry, <laughs> and so it does retain uh, the tire pretty well. Never had a problem in that way, and uh, yeah, other than that, it's just a pretty simple, pretty simple wheel, nothing much to it. It's just, just been great. Alright, if you've been following along for a while with the channel, uh, you'll know that I run, I've been running these Milestar Patagonia Mud Terrain Tires. Um, and I've been really happy with them. I haven't had a problem with them at all. I've, and you know that I've really beat on them really hard. This is my spare, so, and it's never been, it's never touched the road or any trail or anything. It's brand new. Um, never had a problem with them. I've I have hit rocks with the sidewall that I thought, oh geez, for sure, this time, this is probably going to pop the tire. And it never did. It never, uh, it was never a problem at all. Um, the only thing that happened was I put the white lettering out because, you know, I kind of liked how it looked. This uh, font on the white letters is a little goofy for some people. Not everyone likes it, but I thought, hey, I'll put these white letters out. And the problem I had with that is that it rubbed the black off and my tires have become white walls. Other than that, I've been just extremely happy with these tires. Uh, again, no punctures, anything like that. The, uh, the way that I use them is a little atypical, I think. Um, I've put about 6,000 miles on these tires since I got them, and almost all of those miles, probably 95% of those miles have been off-road. So it's a little atypical. I honestly can't give a very good review of them if you're gonna drive them on the road, um, mostly. If you're just gonna drive on these tires to work or commuting or commuting or take trips or anything like that, I can't really comment on that, honestly, because I've just driven them off-road. The uh, corners of the tread blocks on my tires have gotten really rounded off, uh, which is a fairly typical thing, and actually a little bit desirable for uh, rock crawling. You want these sharp corners to be rounded off a little bit and they grip the rocks a little bit better. So 
For an exclusive off-road tire, they've been fantastic. Great traction on the on rocks and um, pretty much everything else. The only trouble they've ever given me was in super deep, slick mud. But on rocks and everything else, they've been great. I've run them typically at about 15 PSI. That's about what I air down to, between 12 and 15 PSI usually. Um, and if I didn't say it already, these are 315, 75, 16, and it actually says right here, similar flotation size to 35 by 12 and a half R16. So it's a, 30, a 315, 75, but they actually say on the tire 35 by 12 and a half. And for those of you that are curious, no, these tires are not made in China. Um, they're owned by an American company, uh, Tire Co, I believe. And these tires are actually made in Indonesia. So they're not a, they're not a Chinese tire, and I certainly haven't had any issues with quality on them. So I know the Milestar Patagonias have been kind of uh, loved and also ridiculed on YouTube and everywhere else in social media, but it's really a great tire and they don't cost a fortune. All right, guys, these are the giant monster truck tires that are going onto the FJ after my one ton axle swap. These are Interco IROC tires. These are the directional version and they are also the bias ply version. Um, they are load range C. Um, tires this size, I don't know if that really matters. I'm not gonna be towing anything with it or, and it's gonna carry the FJ just fine. I'm not even a little bit worried about that. So anyways, I haven't actually used these tires, so I can't really review them, but I can just kind of show them to you. These outside lugs um, are over an inch tall, over an inch deep out here, and they're cupped. So one side is cupped. This side is of the tread is cupped, and that's gonna help um, in mud, muddy, muddy situations. These inside lugs are measure about 24, 30 seconds. So overall, it's a really deep uh, tread pattern. They weigh, they weigh in at only 100 pounds a piece, which actually for a tire this size is pretty light. There are other tires in this size range that come in at between 130 and 140 pounds. So 100 pounds, is, uh, is actually pretty light for these tires. Uh, this is a 17 inch. Going, um, I have to do a 17 inch to get over the brakes on my new axles. That's pretty common. So, um, yeah, let's see what else about these tires. Uh, this, this particular, they call it a 42 inch tire right here on the little sheet. Yeah, 42 by 17 and it's 14 inches wide for the wheel purposes. Um, but, you know, tires are always over, over marketed. So a 42 like this is actually, the actual size is 41.5. And that's true of tire, all tires. If you buy a 40 inch tire, marketed as a 40 inch tire, it's gonna be a 39 point something inch tire. 35, it's gonna be 34 point something. 33, it's gonna be 32 point something. Tires are almost, almost always overrated in size. So this one's a 42, but it's actually 41.5. So I figure once it's on the vehicle and I'm aired down, I'll probably be closer to a, a true 40 inch tire. So that's how that works pretty much across the board for all manufacturers of tires. And uh, Interco is no exception. I'm pretty excited to run these and um, see how they do out on the trail. All right, so here is the new wheel that I'm going with. It is a Spiderlock beadlock wheel. It's a 17 inch wheel and it is nine and a half inches wide with a three and a half inch back spacing. And that is actually uh, what all Spiderlock wheels are like. They seem to have found um, a formula for their wheels that they like. So all of their wheels are three and a half inch back space and nine and a half inches wide. And when I looked on their website just yesterday, um, they seem to only have 17 and 18 inch wheels. I know that in the past they've sold 15s and 20s and 
Um, probably 16s, I don't know, but right now all, they're, all, all that's on their website are 17 and 18s. Um, but the 17s and 18s that they have, they have a lot of similarities. Nine and a half inches wide, three and a half inch backspace, and uh, they come in all kinds of different bolt patterns. This is the eight by 170 bolt pattern for Ford Super Duty. Since I'm using Ford Super Duty axles, that's what I got. Um, it weighs 45 pounds, each wheel does, which is a lot more than my old wheels, but this wheel is also a lot stronger. It has a load capacity of uh, 3,200 pounds, whereas the Stealth Custom Series was 2,200 pounds, which wasn't a problem in my setup back then, but these wheels are a lot stronger. Um, let me, uh, let me show you, compare them a little bit, hang on. So here are these wheels side by side. Uh, let's see, yeah, this is the outside. This is the outside in this direction of the, of the wheels. So you can see the difference in thickness of this, look at this inner bead right here. This is about a half inch of aluminum, maybe more than that. And, uh, and it's, this is much, much thinner over here. And same, same with over here, just a lot. A lot, uh, a lot thicker, a lot beefier, if you will. Um, so I think it'll be super strong. I don't have to worry about these wheels bending or breaking or anything like that. And that's really good because I'm gonna have huge tires and I'm gonna do crazy things with them. So they come with a center cap, which you can use or not use, depending on your preference. The bolt on with three uh, little bolts there. Uh, they make a deeper version, I believe, if you've got big hubs sticking out. Um, so one of the unique things about the spider lock wheels is their ring. Um, it has this webbing inside, spider web, get it? Um, which its stated purpose is to keep the, the ring more rigid so that it doesn't flex and warp and loosen up your bolts. So it's just supposed to be a stronger design and uh, you know, it looks pretty cool. It's got these nice little spider I don't know if you can see it on there, like laser etched spider emblem. So that's pretty neat. Uh, the back side you can see has got a nice big, uh, pretty aggressive texture on it to keep your tire from spinning on the wheel since it's just a clamp force that's holding it there. Uh, this is made of three quarter inch billet aluminum, so it should be pretty strong. You can order replacements if you beat it up too much. Uh, one of the other cool features of this wheel is that these threads are replaceable. Uh, if you ever cross thread it or it gets rusted in there and you have to drill it out or something, these uh, threads are all fairly easy to replace. So um, some bead locks come with two, two uh, holes for the valve stem. This one just has one standard size valve stem hole, which is uh, right here. But um, overall, it's a great looking wheel and uh, seems really, really stout. Probably not gonna damage them at all, or well, not gonna break them. I might damage the, the beadlock ring just because it hits rocks and stuff. But uh, I'm pretty excited to see how they look on the FJ. So with that said, now I have to mount the tires on the beadlocks, which is a nice thing about beadlocks. You can mount them yourself. Um, you don't have to have any kind of machine, a tire machine to pull the bead on. I can just set the tire on here and then bolt on the beadlock. It's just that easy. Probably not just that easy, but uh, I'm going to find out because uh, yeah, I'm going to mount a tire. Let's do that. First step here is to uh, install this valve stem. I've installed lots of tires before normal tires, not on bead locks, and not installing the valve stem is uh, disappointing to forget. There we go. It'd be a little easier if I had some tire lube type stuff, but I don't here. But there we go, valve stem is in. It's just a normal valve stem, no uh, TPMS or anything. So, 
Now, I've never installed a uh, tire on a beadlock wheel before, so I don't know how difficult this is going to be. Let's find out. Well, it doesn't just fall on there, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, I moved to the floor because it looks like I might have to get rough with this thing. And I've got a little dish soap with a little bit of water on a rag, so I'm gonna lube up this rim a little bit because it looks like it's not gonna be super easy. So, a little dish soap lube, and, uh, and then we'll give it a try here. I'll put a little on the tire too. There we go, now it should be really easy. <laughs> The tire is on the wheel, so that's promising. <laughs> so now from what I understand, I just need to get this rubber edge all the way around the, the edge of the opening here. And that shouldn't be too tough, too tough, maybe. So when I push up here, it wants to pull out over here. Let's see here. Ugh. Wow. That is not the easiest thing in the world to do. <laughs> Go. Okay. All right. It's on. So all along here, the edge is nice and tucked in there. So now we're ready to put the ring on. Okay, so now it's time to put the ring on here. We've got 24 bolt holes. We'll just line those up and hopefully the bolts are long enough to reach the holes. That will be good. Let's see. Oh yeah, they'll be long enough. So, Spider Lock recommends using uh, blue Loctite on the threads. So that's what I'm gonna do. Want to do that for all 24 of them. This could take a while. <laughs> all right, I've got all 24 bolts in there. I've got my Milwaukee impact turned all the way down to the lowest setting, so it's not gonna hurt these things, and I'm just gonna ease them in there. Just take up the slack. more than finger tight on there now. All right, this is a uh, 5 16 Allen socket, in case you're curious. And Spider Lock recommends 
25 foot pounds as a baseline and then up to 35 foot pounds uh, if you need to fix leaks. So 25 to 35 foot pounds and we'll just work our way around here. Kind of work our way crisscross across the, the wheel. Still quite a bit of slack in there, not getting to 25 foot pounds right away. That's a good looking wheel and tire, don't you think? Lots of, uh, I've got plenty of rubber out here now. That's a, that is a thick, beefy tire on a thick wheel. So the wheel's uh, 45 pounds, the tire's 100. So 145 pounds of uh, wheel and tire goodness right here. I'm excited to see these on the FJ. Uh, it's gonna be a ton of work still to get that accomplished. Um, just a ton of work. But I'm excited about it. I'm super, it's, it's gonna be a ton of fun. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already so I can share new content with you every Monday and Thursday and so you can follow this build and we'll see you next time.